Hey, this is Commander Atlas Rand, and today we're going to do a quick tutorial on how to scan star systems. This is something that a lot of old players like myself take for granted. We don't even think about it. And recently, uh, when I was flying with a few fairly new players, they kind of expressed some apprehension of what, what is scanning star systems. So I forgot that this is something I had to learn at one point as well. And so I wanted to do a quick tutorial on what it means to scan a system. So what we're going to do is uh, take off and jump to a, another system, one where hopefully I haven't scanned everything. And then I will demonstrate the process of scanning star systems. This is something that you end up doing quite a bit as you play the game. It's a, it's a way to uh, find out what planets and what, um, uh, well, pretty much everything that's in the star system. If you don't do this, your options are to either scan a probe when you first jump into the uh, system, if it's a populated system. But if it's not a populated system, you don't really have any choice other than to scan yourself. All right, so let me just pick some place to jump to. Um, let's see, how about, let's go here. This shouldn't be too far away. There we go, the one jump. I don't think I've been in that system, so we'll find out. And it's the same process for any system, regardless of whether you've been there before or... Well, I guess if you've been there, you don't need to scan it. Because it, as long as you've scanned the system, it should remember it. All right, so... We've arrived. Now, if I... I just did a ping, which showed me that there are 19 bodies in here. So... You should always get into a habit of doing a D scan, otherwise known as a ping. Whenever you come into a system, you could see it's on my on my right trigger. I'm gonna do it again. You could do it multiple times. It's not gonna make any difference. You're not gonna discover any more than you did the first time. But it's a way to kind of get a little bit of um, uh, a little bit of scanning done quickly and easily for you by doing this D scan ping. So again, 19 systems discovered. So let's see what we can see. If I go into the system map, it's gonna show us that there's four suns and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So I'm seeing 15, 16, 17, 18, so I'm seeing 19. Okay, there's the 19. So these 19 are all displayed here. So the question is, is this all that's in the system or not? And to find that out, uh, we go into the FSS interface, which is by default, I believe, either a semicolon or a tilde. And indeed, it says 100%. Okay, so doing that initial ping discovered all 19 of the bodies. Had it not, we would see that that percentage number on the bottom left would be lower. So let's maybe do one more jump and see if... Uh, um, see if maybe we'll find the system which hasn't been fully scanned because I kind of need a system to not be fully scanned to show what scanning does. So let me let me do another uh, another system here. Just go into here. This one again should be within one jump. All right. And uh, I'm going to actually not do a D scan this time around when we jump in there, um, just to make sure that we don't accidentally discover 100% of the system. Although typically that would be a good thing. For this example, for this tutorial, I wanna find a system that I've not previously scanned to 100%. Okay, here we go. Now, 
for people that are really paying attention to the screen, you might see something on the right side of my screen, which has some information about what's in the system. Ignore that for now. I'm going to make a separate video on using that tool. So we didn't do a scan. Let's go back into this interface. Aha, 32%. Good. The so first thing I'm going to do is move away from the sun, because if we stay next to the sun too long, that can overheat the ship. It'll have all kinds of issues. But we do need to be stationary when doing a scan. So move away a little bit of distance. Stop the ship. Make sure you have your volume on so you can hear if all of a sudden the pirate starts attacking you or starts interdicting you and you need to get back out of the screen. So by default, and you may have changed these, uh, I believe semicolon takes you in and the backspace key takes you out of here. So if you start hearing pirate noises, hit the backspace, start flying the ship. Okay, so 32% and we have a bunch of uh, sky. There's the, the sun that we're at the star that we're at. The first thing it wants us to do is to do a calibration scan. Now this calibration scan is the same thing as doing an FSS ping. I'm doing this by holding the middle mouse button. You can do this before going in here. So now that that scan's been done, we're still at 32%. Okay. So let's leave here. It'd be the same thing as doing this as charging the D scanner, doing a ping. 13 bodies. Okay. So that 13 bodies is 13%. We look at the map right now. Here's what we see. The one planned here, a couple of large gas giants, three here, one, two, three, four, five, six here. So kind of mentally remember this image because remember, we're only a third of the way through scanning this. We're going to have more planets that pop up as we scan. So go back in here. Um, you only need to do the ping once and you're good to go. Next thing I want to put your attention to is I'm moving left and right on the middle bottom of the screen. There's a filtered analysis scale. What does this mean? And what are the little squiggly lines? This, this is uh, showing different frequencies the scanner is broadcasting and picking up on and each frequency translates to a specific type of um, specific type of planet or asteroid or moon or something else. So the ones towards the higher end here, so basically from the, uh, let's say anything above a third. So the upper two thirds are going to be planets and moons. Over here at about one third, the very edge of one third, you have asteroid clusters. How do I know they're asteroid clusters? Look at the bottom right. It says asteroid clusters. If I move this further, you can see metal rich bodies. So it actually tells you on the bottom right what each of these little squiggles represent. This would be rocky bodies. This would be ice bodies, gas giants. Okay, so let's put it on here first. What I like to do is not just go back and forth all the time, but actually pick a frequency, in this case, giant gas giants. And now we're going to move this around uh, and you can kind of follow these lines. You don't have to be right on them, but just kind of move this along until you see, aha, do you see those arrows sticking out of the middle as I'm rotating around? So what it's telling me is in the direction those arrows are pointing is whatever the frequency that I'm showing on the bottom is. So I've set it to gas giants, so there must be a gas giant here. When I put the circle around it, it pops up with a white sphere. You can see, uh, or you can hear the noise level is a little bit louder. If I click on there, it zooms in and it shows me again where to move the cursor. So move it there, click. Now a third level of zoom in. You want to move that cursor up again slightly. And now we're going to zoom in. And that's the first gla gas giant that we're going to scan. So now we're at 48% done with scanning the system. You hit uh, the normal click button, the left button to zoom in. You hit the right mouse button to zoom out. So we're going to zoom all the way back out here. And you can see that that little squiggle has gotten skinnier because we discovered one out of probably two gas giants. So I'm going to move it a little bit over to the side so it's right above the other gas giant. And do the same thing. Ignore everything that's blinking. 
until you see those little arrows. You see those, move it up, zoom in, follow the arrows. There we go, zoom in. There's another gas giant. So now we've discovered two, we're at 63%. So nothing else to discover here because there's no little squiggles. Next squiggle going down is over here and these are gonna be icy bodies. And we're seeing that the arrows are pointing us right to where we scanned. Let's zoom in here. Now they're pointing over here. Okay, let's click on this. There's two sets of arrows, which means that there's something in both directions. Let's go here first, zoom in again. Okay, icy body. There we go. Now zoom back out. Move the cursor around again. You can see that there's another arrow over here. Zoom in. There's another icy body. Zoom back out. Uh, any more? Yep, there's another one over here. So let's zoom in over here. Zoom in here. Zoom in here. There's another icy body right there. And you can read all that information about them if you want. I usually scan everything first and don't don't bother reading until I'm done. Um, now, let's see. There's some more arrows here. So there's yet another thing to scan. So what did I miss? Uh, nothing. Okay, good. So those those single arrows means they're signal sources. Those are not planets. Those are some kind of signal sources. I'll show you those after we're done with all, all the bodies. I want to get to 100% first. So we were going up before. We're going to continue going up. These single style arrows are pointing at signal sources. We're going to ignore them for now. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Um, at some point, we're going to run into some actual planets. That'll get us to 100. Okay, I think, was that one? Yeah, okay, see this arrow? So there's like five arrows that make up this arrow. These are just singles over here. So I'm going to zoom in here. And it's going over here. Zoom in there. Pointing up, zoom in there. There we go. There's another rocky body. Zoom out. And there's another one probably. Yep. Zoom out again. Follow the arrows. There's another one. And what we're doing is we're basically just tracing the uh, the solar system, the planets in that solar system. We're at 92% now. And uh, let's see if this will get us to 100 or not. 96. So we're pretty close. Um, there's another one up here. Zoom in here. There's 100%. So now we've found all the planets. So let's zoom out again. But you can see there's still areas that we don't know what's there. They're sort of white. Well, what if we move this? Remember, we're, we're following the filter spectral analysis here. We move that even further down, down to where it says asteroid clusters. Click on one of these. Okay, so it found an asteroid cluster. And there's still kind of light areas here that have uh, no arrows going at them. Let's just go through this whole thing. This, by the way, is a sphere. So it will loop back around to where we were before. You can keep just pushing the mouse cursor up and you'll end up in the same place. So now, as I move this down uh, to lower frequencies, you can see there's more arrows that pop up again. What are those arrows? Well those arrows are pointing me at these things on the very edge of the frequency spectrum we have emissions so degraded emissions weapons fire uh, encoded emissions so these are all things that are not planetary bodies in the system but they are signals in the system and you do you go through the same process i'm actually speeding up the the pace so this is, would be more of the normal pace that i would do these scans which is basically just click in, zoom in, zoom further, zoom out. So I don't spend a whole lot of time watching what I'm clicking on because all of these will be listed on your left side panel. All you're doing is you're discovering them right now. You're just going through and marking them essentially so that they start showing up on that left side panel. Um, and if you don't know what decoded and coded emissions are and, and the, all the other things that I'm clicking on here, like high-grade emissions, definitely something I'll make a separate video about. High-grade emissions is something that you're going to want to scan on a somewhat regular basis to fill up on materials. And uh, not every system has high-grade emissions. 
But when you find high grade emissions, it's usually a good idea to go scan them. So let's see, I'm just looking away. I guess that's the thing that we're looking for. So anyway, until you've found every single one, there'll be a few more of these arrows. I'm not going to bother finding every single one because that's not the point of this particular video. But right now you're 100% scanned. You can see the only thing left, the only squiggle left is at the very left edge of the spectrum analysis, the FSS. And this very uh, left side is signals, signal sources. And these signals, they come and go. So if you scan the same exact planet that I'm scanning right now in the video, if you come here one hour from now, you won't see most of these signal sources, most of these encoded signals. You see this one just popped up while I was looking at it because they come and go. Each one has a lifetime. Like it says right here, this one will be active for 32 minutes and then it'll disappear. This one that just popped up will only be active for 20 minutes and then it'll disappear. So all of these come and go and that's why sometimes you have to scan for them because uh, they're, you, you can't just simply remember where it was last time and assume it's gonna be there a second time. So if we come back out of here, we go to the left side panel and uh, then we get rid of the filter. Um, you will see a whole bunch of stuff in here, but actually we're gonna put the filter back on. We're gonna filter only, um, only planets and moons. And also we're gonna filter signal sources because that's the two things we just discovered. So high grade emissions, that's the high grade emissions I clicked on there. Same thing with all of these that are marked. Now the ones I didn't click on are gonna show up as unidentified signal sources. So that's what that is. And then of course we have, if I turn off the signals, there's a lot of signals. You'll see that these are the planets and then I can turn on the moons. These are the uh, planets, the moons, their locations. And now if we go back into the local map, the system map, remember what it used to look like. So we've now got these two planets that weren't on that map. And we've got this, well, I guess, moon, planet, whatever you want to call it, that wasn't on the map previously either. We also have two of these belts. I believe there was only one belt there before. And I don't recall if this planet was there originally. It may have been. Um, I guess you can scroll back in the video and, and see if it was there or not. But uh, essentially, by scanning this from 33 to 100%, we've discovered all the bodies in the system itself. And uh, I don't remember if the two terminals were on there either. Yeah, I guess I have to look in the beginning of the video myself. But either way, that's how you scan systems. The other method of scanning systems, now this, this, is, this second method is much faster, much easier, but it's only true for systems that are populated. They have people. Go to your left panel, select the nav beacon. Most populated systems are gonna have nav beacons. Some will have what's called the corrupted nav beacon. Don't get too close to the sun, so I'm actually gonna go around the sun and then turn it into the nav beacon. Otherwise you can get sucked into being way too close to the sun. We don't wanna do that. I'll just let the super cruise assist get us there. And once we get there, and if you've never scanned it, I mean, there are people that have played the game for years that have never scanned a nav beacon either. Not everybody does this because it doesn't mean you have to go a little bit out of your way when you get to a planet or go get to a new system. Um, if it's something you already scanned, you go directly to where you want to go. If it's someplace you haven't scanned, you do that ping first. That may, just from random luck, show you the place that you actually want to go just by doing the ping. If it doesn't, but you know that you're in a correct system, then you can do the FSS scan, which is what we just did over the last uh, 15, 20 minutes. Um, or if the, plan if the system has a nav beacon, you can fly to it like I just did right now. So that brings you to a nav beacon. There's usually a number of ships that are hovering here. Um, so if you're in open play, be careful because some people will just sit here and use this as a good, good place to do piracy. Uh, but we're just here to scan the beacon. So you you're show up like this, where's the beacon? Look on your radar. It's the little white thing, the little white square. So I know that if I move my ship down, 
There it is. There's the white square. It comes up. I see it in radar now. It's at 12 o'clock. I select it to lock it. It's a nav beacon. You don't need to do anything else. Just lock it. Wait for about 10 seconds. Your ship is reading the information from it. And when it's done, it'll tell you. Scan complete. System data downloaded. Now we can just warp out of here. We can fly right out. And it will show you, actually I'll cancel this. It'll show us all of the same exact data. Um, I'll get rid of all the fil filters in fact. It'll show you all of this from doing that single scan of the beacon. So it's always your choice. You can scan the beacon or you can do a full FSS scan. If the beacon doesn't exist, it's good to know how to do the FSS scan. If the beacon um, says corrupt beacon, uh, I think it'll still work. I've only hit a few of those, but it's probably in a system that has um, a uh, either war going on or, uh, you know, or, or there's just uh, no control in the system. But either way, it might be a, a good idea to be a little more careful if you're going to scan a compromised beacon versus a regular beacon. Um, all right, and I've worked out. Now I can just go and land on whichever planet I want to land on that I may not have seen previously. Hopefully this tutorial has showed you how to get this done. I'm doing a set of these tutorials for people that I've been playing with in other games that are new to Elite Dangerous that are just coming in. But certainly anybody that has uh, wanted to get a little more of a detailed explanation of how this works, um, I'm happy if I've provided a little bit of clarity for you on this topic. More videos like this to come. Thanks for watching.